In this problem, we're told a small box is held in place against a rough vertical wall by someone pushing on it with a force directed upward at 28 degrees above the horizontal. The coefficients of static and kinetic friction between the box and the wall are 0.4 and 0.3 respectively. The box slides down unless the applied force has a magnitude of 23 newtons. What is the mass of the box? So I think the easiest way to understand this is by drawing it. So let's go ahead and draw what's going on here. So this is going to be our wall. And so we know we're going to have a box being pushed against it, right? So this right here is going to be our box. So here's our box. And so we know, or what we're trying to find in this problem is the mass of the box. So I'm just going to label it M. And so we know we have a force pushing against it, right? And this force, uh, to keep it still, right? Because it will slide down unless it's 23 newtons. So we're going to have a force of 23 newtons pushing against this. So I'm going to draw it like this, right? So this is our force, 23 newtons. And so we know it's going to be pushed, or the degrees is going to be 28 degrees. So it's going to be at 28 degrees to the horizontal. So this is going to be our drawing, and so now let's go ahead and label, or let's create a free body diagram to represent this. So we're going to draw a free body diagram of everything acting on the box. And this is like the most critical step when solving these problems, so let's go ahead and do it. So what do we have? So any object that has mass, right, is going to have mg going downwards, right, force downwards, the weight force. And then we also have, uh, since we have a wall right here, right, we have a wall here, it's going to be pushing back this way with a normal force. Right, because anything, if you touch an object, it's going to have a normal force. And so what else do we have? So we have a force of friction, right? So I want you to imagine that uh, we have this force of friction that's going to be pushing up against this box, right? Stopping it from slow, uh, sliding down the wall. So we have some force of friction keeping it from sliding up, right? Because Or else it would slide down. And then notice we need a, um, we have two more forces. So Notice how we have this uh, force pushing against it. So what we need to do is find the vertical and horizontal component of this and then label it on our diagram, right? We just don't want to put this uh, because it's at an angle and it doesn't really help much. We need the vertical and horizontal component. So how do we find that? So imagine this like a triangle. And so this is going to be our triangle. And so we know it's going to be 28 degrees. And so we know this side's going to be 23 newtons. And so what we're trying to do is find this side and this side. So the way we do that is by taking the cosine of your angle, and we know the cosine, I'm going to label this x and y, we know the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So x over 23, we multiply both sides by 23. This side right here is going to be 23 times the cosine of 28. And so if we do the sine of our angle, it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So y over 23, multiply both sides by 23, it's going to be 23 times the sine of 28. That's going to be our vertical. And so now we can label these forces, right? So the X force is going to be pushing in this way, right? So we have this force pushing this way against the box horizontally, and we know it's going to be 23 times the cosine of 28. And then the vertical force is going to be pushing upwards, right? So it's going upwards, so we have another force, and this one's going to be 23 times the sine of 28. So this right here is going to be our drawing, and so that's done. And so now I want to write down... a what we're told. So given, what are we told? So we know uh, the kinetic friction and static friction, the coefficients of them, right? And we just can label those uh, mu sub k. And so mu sub k is going to be kinetic. And then mu sub s is going to be our static friction or coefficient. And so we know static is going to be 0.4. And so the other one is going to be 0.3. So we know both of these. And so the one we're actually going to use in this problem is static because we're keeping this still, right? This box isn't moving. If the box was moving, uh, you would use the other one. But in this case, it's not. So really, we only need to focus on this one. And so now we've got this. Um, what we're going to want to do is we're essentially going to be solving this problem or this equation. Uh, the force of friction is going to be equal to mu sub s times f sub n. Right? And so essentially what we're going to do is replace F sub n in uh, the force of friction, uh, and then we're going to plug in this. And eventually, the way it's going to work out is we're going to actually be able to solve for m. So what you want to do with these problems is always find the sum of the forces in each direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction. This is generally how you approach each, uh, most of these problems. So what are going to be the sum of the forces in the x direction? So 
the way you want to think about this is, right, what are the different forces acting in this direction? And so what we're going to do is make sure this is set to zero, right? So we know that some of the forces in the x direction is set to zero because the box isn't moving, right? There's no acceleration on the box, right? Because it'd be ma, but a is zero, so equals zero. And so we're going to have zero equals the sum of the forces. And the way we write this is by writing each individual force in the x direction. And if it's going to the right, it's positive. And if it's going to the left, it's negative. So let's go ahead and do that. So the positive force going to the right in the x direction, we only have f sub n. So f sub n, and then in this direction, it's going left. So 23 times the cosine of 28, we label as negative. So 23 times the cosine of 28. And so what you should notice here is that we can move this to the other side. And so we can essentially just rewrite this equation as f of n equals 23, 23 times the cosine of 28. And so notice what we can do is once we solve for f sub y, or the sum of the forces in the y direction, uh, but we can plug this in for f sub n. And so now we're going to do is the y direction. And so this is, again, is going to be equal to zero. And so what we're going to do is find all the forces. So what are the different forces? So uh, let's look, at, right? So we have mg going down, so that's going to be negative. And then these two are going up, so they're going to be positive. So f sub f is positive, plus 23 times the sine of 8, which is positive. 28, my bad. And then minus mg because it's going down. And so what you should notice here is that if we add this to the other side, right, we're going to get f sub f equals, and then it's going to be m times g, right? It's going to become positive if we move it, minus 23 times the sine of 28. And so what we're going to do is plug these into this equation, and we're actually going to be able to solve for m. Because notice how we have m, right? So we can solve. So plugging this in, f sub f is 20 or f sub f is mg minus 23 times the sine of 28, and it's going to be equal to mu sub s, which we know is, or mu sub s is going to be, I actually labeled these wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, this is going to be 0.3. So kinetic, yeah, I, I, I looked at this wrong. This is actually 0.3 and this is 0.4. Sorry about that mistake. Um, but that's going to be 0.3, right? So we're using a static. And so static is going to be 0.4, right? Mu sub s, the coefficient of static friction is 0.4. And then what we want to do is multiply it by f sub n. And so f sub n, we know is 23 times the cosine of 28. So we're multiplying it by 23 times the cosine of 28. And so what we're trying to do here is solve for uh, m. So if we add this to the other side, it's going to get mg, right? So we're just adding 23 times the sine of 28. You're going to get 0.4 times the 20, 23 times the cosine of 28 plus 23 times the sine of 28. And then if we want to get m by itself, divide both sides by g. And so g is just uh, 9.8, right? So essentially this is just 9.8 because that's the force of gravity. And so now we can just, if we go ahead and solve this, we're going to get the mass. And so if you go ahead and do this, uh, you're going to get the mass is equal to about 1.93 kilograms, right? So keep in mind, this is in kilograms. So the mass of the box is 1.93 kilograms. And so sorry about messing up this part, but hopefully you found this video useful.